It's Friday, September 20th, right now on 12 News at 10. Shocking new details about a stabbing on the ASU West Valley campus. Police now saying it was a random attack. I'm Chase Golightly in Gilbert, where police are currently investigating a high school teacher all over a book assignment. Some parts of Arizona could see rain tomorrow. Where and when in my weather impact forecast. 12 News at 10 with Mark Curtis and Caribe Devine starts now. Good evening. We begin with breaking news. Cave Creek Road is closed right now north of Hatcher after a deadly crash. Phoenix police tell us two people were rushed to the hospital. Police say the male driver died from his injuries. Officers are asking the public to avoid the area as the road will be closed for quite a while. Now at 10, an attack at ASU. Tonight we're learning how a stabbing unfolded on the West Valley campus that landed one student in the hospital and another behind bars. 12 News journalist Jonathan McCall just finished reading through new court documents that reveal some disturbing details. Jonathan, what'd you find out? Hey Mark, the details are chilling. These court records taking us inside the mind of a 19-year-old woman now accused of this heinous crime. She told investigators she was planning that attack for at least a day and there were plans to attack two other people, but she chose her victim because she thought she would be the easiest target. Tonight, new court records are providing disturbing details into what investigators say was a random attack on the ASU West Valley campus Thursday morning. Just agonizing screams of pain, and clearly you can tell that it was someone who was fearing for their life. Investigators say a student stabbing another student inside of a classroom. Police say the victim running out for help. Documents show the victim suffering deep cuts to her tricep and left rib cage. The victim was seriously injured and required uh, surgery. Police say as the victim was being led to surgery, she asked officers who was behind the attack and why she was targeted. Attempted murder in the first degree. That's a class one felony. Aggravated assault with a deadly weapon or dangerous instrument, a class three felony. Interfering with an educational institution, that's a class six felony. Casey Sloan now accused of causing that chaotic scene facing a judge. This is analogous to a school shooting. Prosecutors claim that Sloan came to class to hurt someone and had been planning the attack the night before. Prosecutors say she described what she was about to do in a letter to her family and that she struggled with self-worth issues. Prosecutors also claim that she considered attacking two people, including a veteran, but decided on her victim because, quote, she was an easier target and that she knew the victim's first name, but nothing else. Prosecutors calling the attack unprovoked, saying Sloan likely suffers from mental health issues, but also calling her a danger. Uh, the state is concerned that Ms. Sloan is an extreme danger to the community. Sloan's tonight being held at the Maricopa County Jail on a $250,000 cash-only bond. As for that victim tonight, we are told that she is still recovering from her, her injuries. Right now, 12 News is staying in contact to learn exactly the extent of those injuries and her condition tonight. Mark? Jonathan, do we know if the suspect has a criminal history? That's one of the things that we also did learn during that initial appearance. We learned that the 19-year-old does not have uh, a, a criminal record previous to this incident. But again, their big concern was that this was an attack that was unprovoked that did cause serious damage to that victim. Mark? Wow. Could have been much worse. Yeah. Jonathan, thanks. Yeah. More than a year after the diamond fire tore through North Scottsdale, investigators say the cause of the fire has been declared undetermined. Records obtained by 12 News show there was a 15-hour delay securing and protecting the suspected site where it started, leading to a lack of physical evidence. 12 News journalist Bianca Bono explains what happened. I literally looked outside and I could see the flames. That's how close it was. Brittany Morris remembers June of last year, watching the fast moving diamond fire approach her home in North Scottsdale. It got really chaotic, really fast trying to get everyone out of the house. Her home didn't burn down, but it was covered in fire retardant. The cleanup cost $55,000. Insurance covered the bill, but her family had to pay a $5,000 deductible. To like be out that money for something that is someone's fault and we had no control over that, that's so frustrating. 
Residents in the area reported right away that they saw construction crews at a new home development spark the fire. Everyone out here in Rio already knew that it was started by cutting rebar for a pool at a specific home. So Morris has been waiting more than a year for investigators to make that determination official so she and her insurance company could try to get her $5,000 back from the company responsible and so someone could be held accountable. But on Friday, fire investigators announcing the cause is officially undetermined. For them to say it's undetermined, what do they think that fire magically started? Because I couldn't come up with a cause, it was frustrating. Department of Forestry and Fire Management Wildland Fire Investigator Aaron Kassam says he worked with Scottsdale Fire and Police to investigate the Diamond Fire. His biggest challenge, the scene of the suspected origin site wasn't secured for 15 hours. The scene wasn't properly sealed off and um, again, it, it, it compromised the, the whole investigation. Records obtained by 12 News show the two fire personnel who initially responded to the scene reported seeing three men who appeared to be building construction workers spraying the area with a garden hose and construction equipment, saws, and rebar material in several areas. That wouldn't be enough to make the determination? There wasn't anything there at the specific thing. Things were moved. Insufficient evidence, he says, to make a determination. It is frustrating, um, but again, we want to use these in these moments as teachable moments for us. As the state announced its diamond fire investigation was complete, so did Morris's insurance company. Her claim, fighting to get her $5,000 back, was closed too, waiting more than a year for answers, only to be left with more questions. I feel like a company that causes that sort of damage, that's not taking ownership, like there's no reason that company should still be in business. Bianca Bono, 12 News. Bianca, thanks. The Arizona Supreme Court says 98000 voters whose status was in question will get a full ballot for the November election. The longtime voters never provided proof of citizenship because of a computer glitch at the MVD that went on for 20 years. The court said it wasn't willing to disenfranchise voters who registered long ago and weren't at fault for the error. Also developing school threats. They are never a joke. And tonight, Phoenix police say a teen is facing felony charges for making threats for a mass shooting at a dozen Valley schools, including Camelback, Cesar Chavez, and Arcadia. The boy's mother told the court her son was pressured by friends to make the threats. The investigation is ongoing. The man accused of shooting and killing Phoenix police officer Zane Coolidge did not make his scheduled court appearance today. The Maricopa County Sheriff's Office says Saul Ball refused to be transported to court. Ball was scheduled to be arraigned on charges including first degree murder. So how does that happen? Can a defendant charged with murder really refuse to go to court? We asked legal expert Hector Diaz to explain the policy and what could happen next. It's my understanding that the sheriff's office won't force, they're not you know, going to drag the person or bring them in kind of like on a kind of a Hannibal Lecter board or something like that and bring him up and, you know, and have his appearance. At some point, you know, you would hope that uh, if it is an issue of gamesmanship or if it's an issue where this person just simply doesn't want to have, doesn't want to go to court, that at some point he'll realize that you're going to have to. This is, you know, this is not going to go away and you're going to have to go to court. According to court officials, Ball's arraignment has been rescheduled for October 4th. Tonight, a Valley High School teacher claims a parent is trying to get her fired over a class reading assignment. It actually sparked a police investigation into the teacher. 12 News journalist Chase Golightly is in Gilbert tonight, hearing from both sides. That teacher claims she's now getting harassed by other parents and was even threatened with a lawsuit. It all unfolded during a recent Higley Unified School District board meeting. Just barely into the school year, Gilbert English teacher Brittany O'Neill had serious allegations thrown at her. By the end of the first week of school, I had a parent accusing me of disseminating child pornography and being a groomer solely based on the approved literature being offered. A teacher at Williamsfield High School, O'Neill says she teaches a honors multicultural literature course. It's a college level class that high schoolers can take as an elective. It's a dual enrollment course that is not required for graduation. After she gave the first reading assignment, she claims one of her students' parents started harassing her about the 
book, allegedly trying to get her fired and threatened a lawsuit against her. This parent had called other parents of students in my class, attempted to have the police open an investigation against me, and spread lies about my course in an attempt to irrevocably damage my reputation, not only as an educator, but as a human being. O'Neill says that parent also spoke at this school board meeting, identifying him as Charles Villafranca. For my son to read a book that went against all of our teaching values in my home, my parental rights were stripped. Villafranca claims the books are sexually explicit and he did not receive a permission slip from O'Neill allowing their child to read the book. He alleges O'Neill violated this state statute that writes, public schools can't provide students sexually explicit material unless it's for educational purposes and they get parental consent. I am not here to ban books. I am here to make sure that I, a parent, have the right that is given to me under the law. A problem that other parents at the meeting claim has happened before. My granddaughter being assigned an independent reading assignment that contained extremely sexually explicit material. On the other hand, some parents and students who are in O'Neill's class spoke in favor of their teacher. So we signed up for, the class, for what the class entails. We expect a discussion to not be simple or easy, but having us delve into cultures as a whole. All of this ultimately led to Gilbert Police investigating the situation. Higley Unified School District telling me in a statement they were informed by Gilbert Police that a parent had made a criminal complaint against a teacher related to a classroom assignment. Then on Thursday, we're told police are now actively investigating. At this time, we don't know what book started this controversy. I reached out to both O'Neill and Via Franca, who declined to comment because of the investigation. I'm also working to obtain that police report that was filed to learn more about this situation. For now, we're in Gilbert. Chase Golightly, 12 News.